Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now in the last episode I began building out the waterfront to the city with a new harbour, some shops and restaurants, and we ran into an issue where we lacked the workers to fill those places, so I actually had to tear them down temporarily. So I extended then the residential district of Fairview and added a new educational hub in the heart of it to hopefully promote some more educated workers. All the while, we've been attempting to reduce our traffic by blocking off certain turns, limiting the flow of trucks down our busiest streets. Today, though, we're going to be building out a brand new small coastal village. Maybe set up some fishing industry, some of the leisure I've been planning for the coast, and also work on joining the Shoreline Business Park to the downtown area with a more direct route. So lots of little things that I'll have to do all over the place. But before we do any of it, I've already been cleaning up a few odds and ends and built out the framework for our new side town that I just mentioned, so I've got a quick time lapse here for you. So let's begin. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so you find me over on the far side of the town looking in from the coast, right? So just following the train tracks using a parallel tool to add a road parallel to the train tracks, moving it in a lot so we have a good amount of zoning to kind of work with. The idea, generally speaking, was to have this little mini town on this side of the tracks, between the coast and the tracks, and not to spill over the other side of it. It's just kind of what I wanted, to leave that other area free for other things, plus it's where the kind of big six-lane road is going. So, speaking of the six-lane road, we have this first little branching off path of it, and I talk about this a little later in the episode, but basically, I thought that this was going to be a lot higher up than it ended up being, so that's why it kind of comes in at a very sharp angle, and slowly moves down and slopes into the town, as it were. Um, I just kind of thought like if we went straight up to it would be a very big hill so that's kind of why it comes in at that angle but it kind of looks nice it's a little different and we'll talk about all the different ways in and out of the town later so the next thing is using the popular sort of land bridge mechanic to get over the rails so just raising the terrain either side of the train tracks and then slowly bringing yourself up to it so at the moment we have very raised roads so obviously you want to use the smoothen tool or smoothening tool for landscaping this area here is supposed to be like kind of a pier that's, you know, a road that leads directly out to a pier slash harbour. So one of the ideas I got from it, there's a town called Ross Lair in Ireland that has this main road that kind of leads all the way out to the very end of this pier. And there's like a harbour, a little mini industrial estate just off of it. That's kind of what I was working at or looking at as a reference image on my other monitor. The shape of the coast is completely different. So I, it was just a general guide of like how they get to a harbour. Um, but overall, I'd say this is quite original in terms of how I've done the roads, just to fit the land that we have. And obviously where the train is, there's no train in Ross Lair, I don't think. Anyway, bit of a random uh, tangent. So we're just sticking the train station in. This is a very quick time lapse. I don't fill the town in. And we actually don't even do it this episode. We'll probably get to it in the next one. Uh, I really wanted to get your feedback on it and see what you kind of think should go where. So sound off in the comments if you have any ideas at all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so a pretty basic time lapse there, just really building out the framework for this small little fishing village that we've got here. Now, a village is probably even not the right term. It's really just a small suburb that will be focused on a particular type of industry, i.e. fishing. As the population density gradually falls off as we move out from the downtown area, we get out to the kind of another suburb here, effectively. Uh, so, yeah, basically, I was hoping that this sort of pier here is going to be home to some a bit of an industrial estate, some of the fishing industry, maybe some warehouses for that kind of stuff, and it can move between areas. There's actually, now that I think about it, no cargo train terminal. I think that's probably okay, right? There's not going to be a huge volume of stuff here. It's supposed to be a small, small area. I think that's okay. I'm just kind of thinking out loud now, just looking at it. The other thing that's a little bit weird with it, <laughs> just reflecting on my own work now, is we've got three ways to get into this village, uh, but they're all connected to the same road. So there's this main road here that comes straight in off the highway, right? So you've got highway access pretty quickly here, but you can either go in here, which would be a more direct route to take you straight into the industry. That was the kind of idea with that one. Or you can go down here, which will take you more into the residential side of things. Or you've got this one, which does the same thing. So I'm not really, t I mean, it's obviously good to have multiple options, but I suppose I would even question my own planning there. I think initially the idea was that this was going to be quite raised, so it seemed like you wouldn't have roads coming off down this way, we'd have houses here sort of almost below the main road. But I then made the the surface smooth, so it's a gradual decline. So I guess we could, you know, play around with the terrain and maybe make that make a bit more sense. If this was a little bit more sunken in and that road was raised slowly coming down, that would make sense for this one to get into the various houses, uh, and then we'd probably bring roads in kind of off of this direction. Anyway, I've talked too much. <laughs> Let's play the game, eh? 
All right, so we're not actually going to focus over here for a while. I've got some other plans and I want to talk through them. Just going to change the music really quickly, turn that down a bit. So we've also just built our waterfront. It'd be nice to have a, a nicer look at that while I explain kind of some of the things that we're going to be doing. It's now refilled back in, although we've got just patches of grass at the back here, which was intentional. I think we need to either add a path or more trees or something just to make it look a little nicer. Um, but it's filled in quite nicely. Most of the places have jobs of the appropriate tier of worker. So that's been kind of solved with a little bit of the time that's passed in building that previous village. So effectively, when I started the time lapse, we had about 30% uneducated workforce. And by the end of it, we now have 27%. So obviously people are graduating and moving up the educational ladder. So now there's only two buildings with not enough educated workers. So we still haven't solved it, right? There's still people not filling the correct jobs. And of course, not that long ago, we built out this area here, uh, which is a commercial zone. So I just want to talk through the layout of the town really quickly, just very, very quickly. Um, so could we turn on this maybe? Yeah, that's a good idea. So the areas that we've... Okay, let's just go through things really quickly. We've obviously got the suburbs. Everyone, hopefully, who's following the series should know that by now. We have the Industrial Shoreline Business Park, which is going to be featured heavily in today's episode. Then we've got Crown Farms. We have our airport. And then over here, we've got the, kind of the busier downtown area. So if we turn this on, it's actually really hard to see because of the dark green. But effectively... Yeah, I'll keep this on. Effectively, Robin Heights, Prospect, Madison. These are residential districts. Maple Square is where the pedestrian zone kind of begins so maple square king heights which for some reason i'm just looking at now this area doesn't actually have a district huh, i'll have to give them one because this is a wall-to-wall -wall district for residential so you'll notice the density of houses is lower than obviously just these high rises and things over there so that's wall-to-wall -wall bu buildings and that's why that district is cut off so i'll have to make one i forgot to do that anyways to orientate back around this way and to throw this back on we again then have Carlo Valley, right, our university, the only university in the entire map for us. Uh, and there's also commerce next to them, so they have a hybrid of both education and commerce. Newbridge is largely residential and offices. Seaview, pretty much all residential, I think. Some education at the bottom in there to serve those guys. Manor District, that's going to be our finances. We've got our park, Timberane Park, up in the north. I've been meaning to upgrade that. I keep forgetting to do that. There's just so much to do. And, um... Yeah, then we have our new Fairview. That's what we just just recently built. So I'm just going to brighten up the day. We don't want it going into nighttime straight away. So let's just bring it back to 7 a.m. And Fairview is coming along really nicely. So we've just added this kind of educational area here. We've got a high school, a couple of um, elementary schools, a playground for the kids. Always think of the children. Uh, child healthcare center and a medical clinic. So that's all. I think it's actually come together really nicely. I've done a little bit of work on it since, which was just adding in. This used to be a one big concrete area, and I was saying that doesn't look right. The paving is a bit weird. So I decided to add in this secondary path going alongside the back of the high school and just some trees to kind of cover it up from the road. You know, give them a bit of reduction noise pollution, I guess you could say. Obviously, our metro stop here. Look at it. Super busy. People love it. It obviously just unloaded a bunch of people here, so they're all going to go walk to their various destinations and go home. And I've just sprinkled in a few trees just to cover up some of the edges of different places. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with how it's all kind of come along. So this is our other experiment from the last episode, which was having our cargo terminal and having a series of one-way roads that kind of hopefully reduce the flow of traffic. And I think it's worked. We had a few people in the comments saying, like, I think you're overcomplicating it. Maybe allow trucks on various roads. Just l allow everything. Just allow everything and see how everything works and then correct it. Because, like, I can appreciate that. We're stacking lots of things on top of each other. We're like, okay, no right turn here. No trucks on this road. And it becomes a lot over many hours when you're doing that in all these various different places. Um, but I do think that this has actually worked. And I had a good hard look at a lot of the roads and how things are going. However... Traffic is still a bit of a concern. 76% right now. Now 74. Yeah, it's pretty much hovering around the low 70s, I would say. Usually around 72. But it's gotten a bit better, I must admit. But I think it can get even better. Um, definitely don't want to drop in below 60. I was kind of laughing earlier because I was thinking, like, when I first started out, I was like, it is not going to drop below 80. Once it went below 80, I was like, it cannot go below 75. And then when it goes below 75, I'm like, well, at least it's not below 60. So... I guess I keep uh, moving the goalposts somewhat, but it is the type of thing where it's like, well, traffic is flowing. As long as we're not gridlocked, I'm actually kind of okay with it, but it is just so on the edge of being a real problem. So we've got to keep looking for solutions as we look to add more and more things into the place. Okay, so the solution, one solution I have in mind that I want to get to work on now is this industrial area here, Shoreline. 
I want to link this road, right? So if we just follow it for a second. Shoreline is one of my most proud building areas. I haven't filled it in yet, even. There's lots of stuff going on. But as you can see, over time, as I've played more and more of the game, I, I feel like, anyway, I've gotten a bit better at it. My planning has just gotten a little bit better. And um, especially just compared to how it was at the beginning. I'm not saying I'm really good or anything by any stretch, but I think I've gotten better for sure. Anyway, so this main industrial road, I'd left over here because I said it's eventually going to connect in somewhere, probably to fishing that's going to be up here, which I still think is true. But I did notice that this road conveniently is pointing right at a road that we've had issues with before. Now, I don't know if I've actually already made the change. Let's just see. For vehicle restrictions, I haven't. So this road bans trucks. Oh, I should totally... I can't believe I completely forgot to mention. I've now given the highway an option, if you're on the right side, to cross in and get into the town. Now, this is... It was just uh, sort of a temporary thing. I just wanted to see, would people use it? What was the flow of traffic like? Would it get really backed up? And it actually seems to be completely reasonable. Now, it's weird, right? It's coming into another kind of highway thing here. It's then joining onto a roundabout where people kind of go in. It would make a bit more sense if they kind of joined on here somewhere where they can bypass that roundabout. Trust me, I get it. Let's just leave it. It's fine. It kind of looks in a way nice, but we'll just leave it. Anyway, the point is people are now able to come in from here. So that's good. Um, I was going to feed that over to this somehow, but I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's because this road has banned trucks. So the only way to get to the downtown area and to serve all of the commercial buildings and anything else that might need them was to come in from the left side, right? To come in from this main sort of arterial road here. But I'm going to lift that now. We're going to allow them to come across this way and then try to build another solution here coming straight across from this industry so that we take some of the pressure off this roundabout and this bridge. That's my idea. It's going to be a roundabout as well. Haven't tried it. It's kind of a wing and a prayer. Some people have just been asking me consist consistently to allow road access again from the highway and allow uh, lift the ban on trucks here. So that's what we're going to try and do. You know, it's mostly a, a, a thing that you guys have said. But I agree with it now. <laughs> I didn't before, but now I do. All right, so we'll lift the vehicle restrictions for trucks on this. So trucks can now tra um, come across this way. There's still going to be the toll road, right? So the toll road is still stopping or maybe uh, preventing some people from wanting to go across, right? Because they do have to pay a lot when they're in a truck. Uh, it's four four dollars to go through in a truck for sim dollars. Now, do we have any other restrictions on this one? Not that I can see at a glance. You kind of have to stay zoomed in, but no, it looks like we're all good. So we've just allowed trucks. We should start to see that this roundabout's going to get busier in one or two more day and night cycles, right? But we'll try to get ahead of the problem. So we're going to build a roundabout here now and then connect it across to this thing. So let's get working on it. This road is still subject to some changes and some shaping, but we'll just build a more direct crossing right now. Uh, until we figure that out, I guess. So ultimately, that's where we're aiming. We could just literally just go straight across. And that would just build regular road. So I guess we do just want to actually continue on pretty much straight. By the looks of things. Pretty much. And that's just using the regular road type. And we didn't destroy any trees there. Why is that? Because tree anarchy is on. Trees won't be hidden by networks or buildings. Let's try that again then. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let's get rid of those trees then. I don't know what to do. What I need to do different. Anarchy on, anarchy off. Was the, um, actually, let's figure out why. All right, let's see how that does for us. Now, I've had to pause time because we've just severed the connections here. We're going to build a roundabout here in its place. So just real quickly, we'll get rid of that. Get rid of some of the trees here, some of the path tool, because it's probably going to encroach. Might attempt to remove this and straighten this road up as well, because it's coming in, coming in at a funny angle. But I'll wait to put this one down first. So this was a complicated road. We have lane markings and all sorts of things, traffic lights. But just to prevent any bugs, just going to remove all lane markings. We're going to go in here. We're going to say 
stop that light, remove it. So hopefully no more confusion. Also just remove the traffic light. So nice blank, weird, but blank intersection for us to work with here. Go to our roundabout tool. We're going to go with a three lane road, please. If I could find it. Three lane road. And bring it, make it nice and big. So there we go. So, oh yeah, so we are severing a connection for the tram route. Huh, so we could build a route that goes straight through with tram road only, I suppose. Would, should we, I would say actually not just tram road only, we'll even allow buses and taxis to go through. Yeah, I've seen that actually, um, recent, not too long ago, there's a roundabout near me where just straight through the center of it, it's like a bus road. Now it's guided by traffic lights to allow it to do that, but we'll see how we get on without that. Uh, so with this, it doesn't need to be a one way. We, God, I can never find anything in these menus. Right, so, a four lane road with tram tracks. Close, two lane road with tram tracks, yes. Uh, so we'll go with a curve tool. Bring that straight out to this one here and just link it in. Now, we'll go with normal mode. So that's not weird at all, but we can shape it. <laughs> these cars are gonna freak out. All right, there is a node in the center, that's good. Just bring it a bit more like here. All right, we're looking a little strange. <laughs> Can we maybe, there we go, bring that in. All right, so this is what we got. Now in this area, because we've actually got effectively, it is just two lanes there, two lanes all the way around. I'm gonna make this three lanes. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, I tell you what would be perfect. Three lane, five lane road, but asymmetrical. Because we have a three lane roundabout. So an asymmetrical, perfect. I actually didn't, wasn't even sure if it was in the game. Yeah, because coming onto the roundabout, we want to use all three lanes that we're going merging onto, but coming off of it, we only need an exit of two. Um, traditionally, if you're doing this, the third lane only opens up like right before the roundabout, so people just move into that, but you can have it go further back if you want. I suppose this is a decent distance off of the bridge. So I guess we'll leave it. We can maybe shape this just to straighten it up a bit. All right. Okay. Uh, so we'll need to give it the rules for being a roundabout. I know there's a hotkey for it, but I'm just going to do it this way first because sometimes it doesn't actually recognize the road. Okay, cool. It did. Uh, applies all traffic rule at the uh, rules for roundabout button is disabled blah, blah 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 cool right so it's made this a priority road it's removed all the crosswalks so that's totally fine okay uh next up is going to be doing the lane guiding markers now this can be a little tedious but i'll try to make it as smooth and seamless as possible so i basically want you to always go onto that one and you guys can go into those two Uh, if you're in this lane, you must be going there. You know what? I'll leave that to last and maybe do that on my own. You're going there, and you're going into these two. So if you're on the inside lane, you're taking the inside of the roundabout. If you're on the outer lane, you're taking the outside. Simple as that. We'll do the ones coming off of it in a minute. So we'll just make that consistent across all of this. The only difference would be this one, because you actually have three lanes. So you can go into one, each one appropriately. To know where you're going and this has the highest volume of traffic anyway so it works out a little bit all right so the next thing then would be getting off right so you'd want to go there and you'd want to go there or there yes and you want to go there or there yeah so that means if you're on that inner lane because you're on the far inside it means that you're not going here you're going there Potentially, although you have the option to end in the outer lane. <laughs> um, right, so let's just do it <laughs> instead of talking about it. We'll get those guys to come off there. You'll come off here or you'll continue on to the outer part or you'll make a choice of which lane you want to go into. That's fine. And then you guys are similar. You go like that. You go like this or this. And you make a choice. Is that it? Just this one left then. So you're coming off, you're coming off, or you're going that way, or you're making a choice. And this should give everyone the freedom to move out correctly. I don't know if the AI in the game will use the inner lanes the way I'm hoping. I mean, they should, but they might not. 
because the middle lane will still kind of take you where to where to uh, to where you want to go. Actually, this middle lane will not take you to the left exit, right? So if you follow this middle lane just really quickly, just follow this around. We're in the middle. We're in the middle. Our options are to end in the far lane on this one, the outer lane, or we can continue. But now we're on the outside. So if we're here, we gotta turn. You have to. <laughs> so the only way to get over there from here is to use the appropriate lane and ride the inside of the roundabout around. Now, if you've made a mistake, you're in this lane, you don't know what to do, you're like, oh, no, 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 I wanted to um, actually take the first exit, or the second exit. I'll uh, move merge into the middle now. So you can get into that middle lane and still end up on this side if you want to, or go on the outside. This is how it works, and trust me, I know. Um, all right, or how it should work. Don't know if the game will work, but we'll see. So is that it? I think that might be everything. The only things then to correct would be maybe just these... Um, Taxi and bus lanes, so we know that they want to connect in there. So the only thing that would make this not work is if a taxi is in the taxi lane, but they wanted to go, for instance, this way. There's no taxi lane that will take them there. They'll just end up going right. So I'm guessing, I think the way it works with pathfinding is they will just get out of that lane and they'll use the roundabout as, as they should. So that's fine. I think that's how it works anyway. But if we just give them that designation hopefully it'll encourage them to do that um if they need to i think if they don't need to and they end up needing to go somewhere else they will just make that harsh move which is good that it's like um it's like a soft rule rather than a super harsh limit because sometimes it's unfair you see people use those lanes even though i've banned them because they might need to just make a sudden turn or something so i'm actually okay with that it's great uh i think that's it then i think that's it so we could just let time play and see how this all shakes out what's our speed limit on this 40 40 is fine It'll take a minute for it to kind of work itself out. The other thing we need to do just while time is playing is just limit the types of cars on this. So on the inside, you should not be a taxi. Um, or a bus, right? Yeah. And on the outside, it's the opposite. You shouldn't be a truck or a private car. Now, you've had your power cut off, so we'll have to put that back down. <laughs> this guy should kill the grid for the entire city, actually. <laughs> Uh, where could we join them up to? Can I come across here? Ugh, what a what an eyesore having to do that. I know there's probably an easier way to get across. I suppose we could just go across the roundabout rather than around it. At least power's back on. I think I will probably remove this building and straighten this road up just to make it look a bit more deliberate. Like I actually planned it. Uh, so, but this is what we got. Where, where are you going? So you're a post truck. Nice. Yeah, so I would actually say that you're only on here if you're a truck or a service vehicle or something. So let's say no private cars. Right? I don't want people driving to work this way. I'd be tempted as well to put a toll on it. I think a toll would probably be a good idea. Because ultimately, I do want to toll trucks taking this way in. I'd rather they use the ferry stops if I can somehow encourage that. So we've banned private cars on this road. Do we need to ban taxis? I wouldn't say so. I think everything else is fine then. Buses, everything's fine. Just no private cars. Is that a real thing? I don't think, you know, in all my limited experience driving, uh, just recently, for those who know, don't know, I've been just taking lessons and so on and so forth. I have a test soon. Um, I've never seen a thing that says no private vehicles, except for like a car park. But I've never actually seen a road say that. This seems to be working. The question is, will it reduce traffic? I have no idea. And even the trams are coming through. I mean, that's, uh, that's quite funny, but I don't really mind if they're going to do that, to be honest. The only other thing I would say is just turn off the crosswalks. Not that they're really needed there anyway, but just to say, to be safe. All right, there we go. So that's that roundabout done. So that was the first thing I wanted to do. So the other stuff was coastal village, fishing industry, and leisure plans. Yeah, so today I've actually... We'll look back on this in a little bit of time. See how the traffic situation is panning out for us. Right, we're still a 74. No difference is really felt right now. Maybe it'll bump up a bit. Maybe not. Um, yeah, so we're suffering, right? We're suffering. Not enough educated workers. So what are we at now? 25. It's gotten 1% better. We're still educating people and still just not enough to keep up with. And the schools are full. Two spaces in this particular school. And these... 
elementary schools. There's actually a few spaces in the elementary schools. It's the high school that's the bottleneck because we need... Well, actually, not really. Actually, the base tier elementary school education is... Um, and graduation is a problem, too. All right, I guess we'll leave it. Um, oh, yeah, so I wanted to talk about this roundabout just really quickly because it's had a big impact on my life. So if people remember, I said I'd base this roundabout off of the Peas Pottage roundabout in Crawley which is uh, something I've gone around many, many times, and you know that I've been doing driving lessons and such, and it's impacted my life because I failed my test on this roundabout. So I wanted to talk through that a bit. So I, I'm going to get on my soapbox here and talk about it just for a couple of minutes. So feel free to skip ahead while I'm looking over this roundabout. There's not going to be any gameplay for a minute, but I thought some people might be interested about it. And some people actually live in the UK who've been watching and they actually know the roundabout and everything. So I wanted to kind of talk through what went down. Uh, by the way, I've been very, very lucky and fortunate to get another test in just a couple of weeks. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't flub it again um, because it was, well, we'll get to it. But a lot of people don't get tests for like three or four months. It's really difficult to get it. I actually had to book one for March in Liverpool just to kind of get into something that my then instructor could start doing these shady back deals with other instructors and eventually doing swaps and exchanges and stuff, eventually got it all the way brought down to Crawley and for two weeks time, which was incredible. It's really lucky to get that, so I'm, I'm very fortunate, because most people got to wait at least a month to be able to get someone to swap with them, but it just worked out. So hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, everything goes good for that one. And I'm kind of confident because everything went well in my previous test, except for what happened on this roundabout. So I'm going to take you through it really quickly. So the test center for Crawley is just really close by that roundabout. It's like a mile away. It, within two minutes, you're hitting that roundabout as the first port of call on your test leaving the uh, test center. So I get in my little, in my car, I've got this random guy in there testing me, and yeah, a little nervous, not too nervous actually, but just a little bit, and it's like, all right, just got to concentrate and do really good. So you've got about 40 minutes to do. We come up to this roundabout, everything goes well, I cross it, turns out we're going into this place. We could have been going down uh, to a little village that's way off, or we could be going across to go to any number of different areas, right? But we go into actually what was a relatively easy route, where we go around a small little village, it was... I can't remember the time. Oh, 2.30 p.m. Pretty quiet time in between school runs. Not at rush hour. Quiet roads. Everything was fine. Everything goes good. You know, I'm driving around, parking where he wants me to, answering his questions correctly about how do I do different things, and uh, all of that. Everything's good. It turns out I actually only ever got, I got one minor uh, for positioning. So I'm not sure what the minor was actually necessarily for, but I think what it was for was... Um, at a junction like this, when I was taking a left, so crossing the traffic that's coming at me, when I was crossing over it, I think I kind of went over the lines just a little bit, like at this bit, if you know what I mean. I think that's what it was. I don't know. He didn't actually tell me because we talked about the roundabout more. So let's get to the roundabout. So that was the only... Basically, I had a flawless run. Except, you know, well, not flawless. Almost flawless run, except for that little thing. Just one minor for positioning. You're allowed 14 minors. As long as you don't make the same minor mistake three times, or as long as you don't get 14 minors, you're good. You're fine. You can have those minors. Uh, but that was the only one I got. Except for I did get one other minor on the roundabout, which also was part of the fail. So we'll talk about it. So... On the way, so we're on the approach back home. We're coming home. Everything's great. You know, things have gone really well. I'm still in pure gamer mode. I'm focused. I'm not getting too confident or anything. I'm just like, okay, everything's good, but just, you know, got to be still focusing. Now, because there's actually more exits in the real life roundabout than there is on this one, I'm just going to, we're going to have to pretend. Um, and the only way I can really make this make sense is we're going to invert the roads. Okay, so we're not going to be... Just forget the markings on the road, and I'm going to take you through what I know, because I was on the left side. I know you could say, like, why not just invert it? It's just complicated. I'm just going to, we're going to pretend like I'm driving here on the left side, and I've got to come up and do something, yeah? Because that's, it's more closely emulating the situation. So ultimately, what I have to do is pass this exit, pass this one, and take this one off to get back to my test center, yeah? So that's effectively what I've got to do. Now, the only difference here is I'm not on a, on the main road here, the highway, okay? I'm on a smaller road that's just coming to here. Let's just pretend that. There is still a highway going underneath this roundabout, and that will be very important later. All right, so I'm driving. Here we go. We're going up the road. It is a... Well, it's not up the road. It's just a continuous road, right? This is a continuous road, and it's two lanes the whole way. But on this particular day, uh, road works. So one lane is completely closed. So we've got one lane available to us, and one lane is completely closed. Now, the 
the roundabout's guided by traffic lights. So we're crawling along. You know, we're just crawling along, stuck in traffic. The only traffic we had the whole day as the roadworks are happening, and we're just stuck in our little lane. Now, right as we're about to get onto the roundabout, the roadworks end, right? So it ends literally three, I'd say two to three car lengths before the kind of junction. And we join the roundabout. And remember, there's traffic lights. So it's not like we have to get going quickly or anything. We just go by the lights. On the approach as well, the roadworks end, but a third lane also opens up. Uh, so this would be the third lane. This is the middle lane. And the first lane, sorry, I should say the first lane just kind of appears. So uh, we're all in the middle lane, effectively. Suddenly the roadworks end. So if you want to go over to the right, you can. And if you want to take the first exit, you can now hop into your left lane. Okay. So using road markings, I'm still I'm in the middle lane and I'm thinking, okay, where do I need to go? He says, take the third exit. So I'm like, okay, third exit. So in my head, I counted the first lane could be the first or second exit. The middle lane could be the second or third exit. And the third lane could be the fourth or fifth exit. That's what I was thinking because there are other roundabouts that work that way, but not this one, of course. So, whatever. Um, by the way, it should just be really quickly mentioned that you can't be done for going the wrong way. As long as you're doing everything safely. Not a big deal. You can, um, you know, the guy could tell, t he could say, take a left, and you could go right. No, not a big deal. I mean, that might be a bit dramatic, but you know what I mean. You can go the wrong way. It's allowed. Even if you're to be following Satnav, you only get, like, a minor for going the wrong way. It's only if you're a danger or something like that will you get um, uh, a serious fault, which is a fail. So I'm in my middle lane, <laughs> and uh, I see that people are now moving to that left lane, people are moving to the right lane, and I'm in the middle, and we're like, okay, let's go, let's do this. So I go straight out. Now this exit is super close. It is literally just like a left-hand turn, but I'm like, no, we're not going that way. We're going to go into this lane here, right? So now I'm on the left. Now forget the road markings, remember, right? We're going around the opposite direction of this roundabout, and it's three lanes. You have to remember that as well. We're looking at three lanes all the time, not two. So we're in three lanes here, and we're pushing out, and we're going to three lanes. Now, on this one, just as I was crossing here, going to here, I realized that something's not right. I'm like, this isn't how it should be. I've done this before, and I know that if I want to get to the test center, I'm not ending in the right place. This is naturally now taking me out onto the motorway. Now, there are test routes that go on that motorway down to different areas. So I'm like, okay, whatever. If it's going to take me there, it's going to take me there. I'll just follow the lane correctly. That's what I've been told to do a million times. If you find yourself in the wrong lane, don't do the dangerous thing, which is last minute crossing over, you know, getting in people's way, doing anything like that. Just follow it. Just follow it to its conclusion. Then he'll tell you to loop back around and it'll be fine. So I'm like, okay, so I'm right where this car is. And I realize something's not right, but whatever, we'll continue. So I continue and I progress into this left lane and that's totally fine. And then as we're coming to this point... The instructor looks at me and says, you cannot go on the motorway. Now, I just, like, freak out. Everything kind of slows down. I slow down, literally. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you cannot go on the motorway. And I said, but, so we're just, I'm moving. And I'm like, but, but I have to. And he's like, but you can't. You're not allowed on the motorway. And I said, okay, if that's what it has to be, then I slow down, stop, check my mirrors, indicate, and then move over to this lane and continue out. So this one then takes me correctly where I'm supposed to go. And he starts writing down his little iPad. And I'm like, well, that's not good. Whatever just happened there has totally blown my mind because we do go on the motorway. And not just that, there's a test route on the motorway. So why? Why? <laughs> so we continue. Go all the way down to the test center. I park. I do a few other things. We, uh, you know, we finish up and he says, I'm sorry to say, you failed your test. He's like, do you want to get your instructor? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So the instructor sits in and he goes, I got to say it was a great drive, but we failed on the roundabout because you had to cross the lanes. And I said, well, I wouldn't have done that. You told me to. And he's like, yes, because you're not allowed on the motorway. And I look at my instructor. And I'm like, but we go on that motorway all the time. And the, the tester is like, you go on the motorway. And he's like, no, 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 no. We go on the A road, not the M road. It turns out that on this roundabout, this is the delineating line for when the motorway, sorry, yeah, the motorway becomes an A road. 
The road doesn't visually change, the speed limit stays the same, and there's as many lanes as there was before. It's just where the M road ends. So the northern part of this roundabout is an M road, a motorway, and the southern part is an A road. News to me. <laughs> so basically, I found myself in the only lane on this entire roundabout that was going to take me to the one place I'm just legally not allowed to go. Now, you could argue, as I kind of did, in a nice way. I wasn't mean about it. But I was like, you know, I'm, I'm doing a test in order to prove that I can drive like a regular driver. And in this situation, a regular driver would have continued on to the motorway. And he's like, yeah, but you're not, you don't have a license. You're not allowed on it. I'm like, fuck that, man. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> so that's how I failed. I failed by not endangering anyone, not doing anything wrong, but I failed by being in a lane that effectively meant I had to cross, cross over because legally I'm not allowed on a motorway. And what's the difference between the motorway and the A road? Nothing. At that point, anyway. Nothing. I'm sure there's differences later on. I don't know. But, uh, so that's it. So I asked my instructor then later. I was like, "Could it, is there anything I could have done to get out of that? He's like, yeah. If you took the first exit out and ended on this right side of this lane to get out, you could have done it. But you would have had literally seconds to realize that mistake and then do that. Because it's right there. So remember, like I said, this is three lanes. And there was roadworks, by the way, so we were all forced into one. The signs are completely blocked, by the way. It's just something you kind of have to know. And there's signs right in front of you, right? There's signs right here on this side of the roundabout, this part right here, that will tell you what these lanes mean. But it's only for these three, like the three that are here. And on these three, it says you got to be in the middle to get to over there. So that's what I looked at, and I thought, like, yeah, middle. This big giant sign says middle, but no, to end up in the middle here, you have to be on the right. So you'll have to, you'll eventually end in the middle. This inner lane is for people who are coming around already. It's really complicated. And I'm sure I'm not probably describing it the best on this anyway. So it, anyway, long story short, I ended the entire thing with a fail and two minors, the minor, one minor being um, traffic light problem or something. I can't remember what exactly what it was. It was just something to do with this roundabout, basically, and positioning. Um, and the serious fault was not reading road signs correctly, because technically there are signs that tell you. Now, there are signs on the road that will literally say, this one will have a big thing that says, you know, motorway and services, or Horsham and motorway, and then this one will be like Crawley. It says it on, it's printed on the ground. But there was roadworks, and there was just a huge amount of cars. And when I, my instructor took me, he, when he was driving me home, he just immediately brought me around to this. He wanted to see it for himself, and he was like, that is such a shit one, man, because you can't see it. And on the approach, like, there's these big signs that are on the way up to it, completely blocked by trees and bushes. Uh, so it's, it, I'm not blaming the signs. I thought I needed to be in the middle, but I also thought like, well, no big deal. If I get it wrong, I'll end up safely where I need to be. Turns out I couldn't go there. Anyway, that's a long diatribe, but there you go. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. I, I, I feel like I was done on a real technicality. I was saying to people like, it's so awkward to explain like, oh, I failed, but I failed on this annoying thing because people go like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like, look, if I had tipped a curb when I was parking, I'd own it. That's my mistake. That's my bad. As minor as some people might consider that, that would have been a fail and I'd own it because it's my fault. But on that one, it's like you, I literally chose the one lane out of 14 that I'm just not allowed to go to because I'm a learner. But if I wasn't a learner, I would be allowed to do it. And I basically had no way out. There was roadworks and no signs. So FML on that. But anyways, it shouldn't happen again. Um... But yeah, anyways, <laughs> so there you go. So I failed my test, but hopefully uh, we'll get it on the next one, eh? Uh, so yeah, so these guys didn't have enough workers and they become abandoned because of the education system. So what's the problem? So nine, yeah, too many uneducated. So we're not educating them fast enough. Not even out of elementary school. That's the thing that's, excuse me again, sorry, I keep burping, is really, uh, it's really confusing me because there's eligibility for everybody to go to elementary school. But I suppose these people just haven't been through it yet. Um, now, what else are we going to do? I've gone completely off track with thinking about that. And that was such a diatribe. And it, oh, yeah. We've let time play a bit. How's this all working out? 75. This would have been a better one to explain it on. Because this is like just like how I said. It's like you're in two lanes. 
and then it becomes three. This one is like the first exit, but it's again, the roads um, would be reversed. So yeah, I think I'll probably put in the toll road somewhere over here. But we can see some of our cargo trucks going straight out of that area. Love to see it. Love to see it. And it doesn't look like they're getting like massively backed up, even with the amount of time that's passed. So that's good. Yeah, so what I was going to focus on was a little bit of leisure. Um, and that's what got, threw me off. I got distracted because I've added a bunch of mods that have given me some extra buildings, just building mods. Uh, so just to break it up and add some variety again, because we've been using a lot of the same buildings. So I've added some... I'm not really too sure where they are. They get kind of thrown into all different groups. Just quickly check here. Tourism and leisure. There we go. So we have a Club Alpha, Club Anastasia, and a nightclub. So just some like clubs, some casinos, things like that. Man, look at all these abandoned places. What a shame. Workers in there just weren't good enough to keep the business going. They just didn't know how to... What were they trying to do? They didn't know how to sell... That's not a good look, is it? Come by City Skylines too in this abandoned... <laughs> couldn't make the sale, huh? Is that a bad omen? <laughs> Possibly. Anyways, let's get working this out. So I was thinking somewhere over here. Ultimately, what we've got is this big financial district. So I thought, yeah, a casino and some clubs and some nightlife out this way would be kind of cool. Uh, some resorts, that kind of thing. Keep it a little further away from some of the residential so that they're not too miffed by the noise. Uh, so that's kind of what I plan on doing. So I don't think we need these power lines anymore. I think this area has power. And we want to kind of flatten out this terrain and raise it up a bit. Fact and raise the road, yeah, because the road's sinking down a lot too. So I'm just gonna look for this bit. Seems really sunken down. Just raise that. So some of the mods that we've gotten for some extra buildings, like I said, we have some clubs. One thing I was thinking of putting in though that I was looking at was this really nice hotel um, that we've unlocked. So I still haven't gotten the end complete end game hotels. We have a spa resort, which I thought would be pretty nice somewhere down here. So a spa hotel with multiple pools, a massage service, and a large outdoor area. It has some landmark needs, some shopping needs, and some, excuse me, nature needs. So nature is obviously good out by the coast and kind of in here as well if we put more trees down. Shopping is great right there. So this seems like this is where it should go. And then sightseeing, we could put something around it. The clubs count as sightseeing anyway, so that would be good. Destinations, you know, for them to go to. So, yeah, I reckon throw this down and then see where it can go. I don't know. Should it, it should have its own sort of entrance. Should it be sideways or facing more like this? onto the big main road? Or should the side of the building be like there? If we did this, we could have kind of maybe trees blocking it off on the side and a pathway, actually. That might look good. All right, so I did a lot of back and forth, a lot of trial and error, couldn't really land on anything. And then I just went quiet and said, you know what? Well, time lapse it. I'm just gonna figure this out on my own. So I've cut a huge amount out of this. This was like two hours <laughs> of going back and forth. So I completely lost my awareness of time the episode ended up running really long and then i also use a lot of cuts later in the video so i just want to explain that very quickly here just let you know if there's cuts that seem at weird times it's because i was just talking about random stuff that went way off topic so just to get back on topic basically building out this sort of leisure district off of the coast i decided look it's going to need a key wall eventually the key wall is going to continue on so let's get that in position first i don't know why i don't just learn that because it's a repeat mistake that I keep doing where I try to build the innards first and then the key wall. Always do the key wall first if you think you're going to have one. So and you can always just get rid of it if you don't want it. So it's much better just to do that first. So anyway, building the key wall up from that sort of commercial slash industrial harbor down there. Um, building that all the way up and trying to get it like, you know, looking nice. But it's, an, it's actually sloping gradually up. So it's a little strange for a key wall. I don't know if that would really happen in real life too much but I think it works by the end so we'll see what you guys think so I was going back and forth as you can see a few times on this I was like okay do I put a road next to it or do I leave the road further in what else can be done so I decided to push the key wall further out from the road because I think to break it up we could have buildings on the road next to the key wall if that makes sense and if we update the key wall to be the the one with the trees on it I think it comes built in with a path I think so people should walk along it, but if not, no big deal. It still just looks nicer that way anyway. So just flattening out the terrain, trying to create a level area and a, uh, a shape for the coast that's going to look good and be also different than the one we just did. So effectively, I'm building out another waterfront. So here's where I actually get somewhat creative. So I wanted to build the ocean resort. That's the building that sits out at the water. But you can see just for a second, it just won't really... 
it's really messy like to get it to work basically it's hard to explain but when you're trying to raise the height the the shape of the bridge going down to it is all weird and, and offset and i couldn't get a way to do it so i was like okay i'll build a little outcrop of the land that comes out and i'll make it flat and level and that way if i put the ocean resort on it it should be nice and level as it goes out to the water. That was the idea. So if you're coming in with the ocean resort on a sloped hill, like normal coastlines would be, it tends to really mess with it. But if you have a really flat area, it should flatten itself out and be just level to the sea, if that makes sense. So that was the idea of this little outcropping. So I tried it with a little roundish outcro outcropping. Looked weird, obviously, but I was like, oh, well, it, it kind of works. So let's do this, but do it properly. So I did it in a kind of a square fashion. And it just so happened that the spa resort that we just put down seems like it would fit in here quite nicely. That wasn't the plan. I would love to pretend like it was a great vision of mine to do that, but it wasn't until I built this big square that I was like, why don't I just put that in here and then build the boat resort, sorry, ocean resort, off of that. So that's what I'm basically working towards now. I kind of realize it around this point right now. So, in order to get terrain to behave itself, I do keep the road next to the key wall. I had originally thought like, okay, no, the restaurants or the commercial zone or whatever will go next to it, but because of the way terrain works against key walls, it just seems better if we build a road next to it. So, that keeps the uh, terrain from kind of clipping through the key wall, basically. So, we put down the spa resort, but as you can see, it's messed with the terrain quite a lot, because it is still a slope. It's not a completely flat area that I created. It still needed to slope a little bit to kind of get down to sea level, obviously, because there's no way we can just build like big steps or anything. So it had a very slight slope, but it still worked where I could put in the ocean. So I keep calling it the, yeah, no, it is the ocean resort. I could put down the ocean resort. That's the, it had, comes baked in with the road. And I'm trying to just raise it just slightly over the key wall there, just so it looks a little bit better, a little bit more deliberate. But the pier down to the ocean resort is strange. It is floating kind of in the air, at least partially about the first third of it is but i think we're just gonna have to leave it i mean most of the time we're gonna be looking at it from up high even down low we can just say whatever and i might be able to obfuscate it in future we'll talk about that later anyway so that's all in position and now i'm just like okay well i'll just dress the terrain around it see does this kind of work you know now that the roads are in there was a lot of back and forth trying to get the height correct shortening the area so i ended up saying like well we've got all this area this grass at the back here couldn't really think of anything to go into it so I was like I'm just gonna move it all up I saved it just before I did because it took me so long so decided to push everything up just with the mover tool which kind of <laughs> made everything chaotically crazy so I had to level it all back out again but I gotta say we'll see for the result once it's level I think it looks quite good so I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see what people think of this one and you can see this bend in the pier I don't know how to avoid that it seems like you need to put down the building in a totally flat area, but we are just slightly over sea level, so it has to bend down. But it, the stilts don't go all the way down. They just stop midair, and that's what looks weird. It wouldn't look too bad if it had a bend if the stilts went down with it, but that's just not the way it works. And the stilts are like surface level. They don't go all the way down. All the other naval buildings in the game go all the way down to the land, like the, the pier, the marina all these different the boat hotel they all bring their you know stilts all the way down but for some reason on this building it just kind of floats on the water so it's almost like it's a cosmetic thing anyways uh so right the spa resort is in position the ocean resort is in position and then i'm pretty happy now i'm just trying to get everything level make sure the road is like tucked in against the key wall and now we can kind of get rid of all that terrain that's kind of creeping through a little bit wanted to connect the road back up over on the right hand side i ultimately leave the key wall where it is you know we could extend it out again further but i haven't gotten to that stage just yet i do want to add in a harbor of some sort and a ferry stop so that people can kind of go back and forth between this area and the village we built out at the very beginning of the game that'd be a nice kind of destination to go back and forth to i think so that's pretty much it let's start building this area out now with some shops and bars and clubs and stuff all right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a heck of a time lapse, but look at what the result is. I think this looks really good. I'm like, wow, it worked. Like, I didn't plan any of it. Just, I was actually planning on creating this outcrop for the ocean resort. And then I was like, this would be perfect to put the spa hotel on it and have the two combined. I think it looks great. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Now, I probably want to add a few extra trees or something around the area to fill it in a bit. And of course, we're going to be adding in our shops and our various other landmarks we did have a bit of a tidal wave hit the uh <laughs> hit the coast there's a depression that's like pushing back out now 
I think it's largely retreated away from this area, but it actually destroyed one or two buildings, and there's still... Yeah, there's still a little bit of flooding going on, but, you know, people are freaking out down here. They'll be fine. This is nothing. It Don't worry about it. Although a second one might hit, given a bit of time. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe not, actually. The wall is actually kind of, yeah, filled back in. The, w the water was basically... Again, pulling away from this, creating a kind of a depression away from it. And I thought they were going to get hit the second time. It looks, it's, it's fine. They're okay. It was cool though. I'd never seen this before. I'd never had mass flooding like this. But all the cars get like pushed along the road, uh, which is awesome. Like they they properly lose control of that stuff. It just look. I mean, it's it's terrible for the people on the ground. <laughs> but I was just really impressed, I guess, with how like the water carry sweeps everything away very naturally. It's, it's quite cool. Uh, but I'm sure that'll be fine. This is quite low down now. I mean, we're really... I haven't changed the height of this, though, so that's why I'm just like, huh, I don't know. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Maybe this thing sliding in is pushing the water up a bit too much, maybe. If we could, uh, just lift that edge of the key wall there. I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem, right? Can we just select nodes, please? Maybe just select that node right there and just bring this up a bit. That might help. Just a smidge. There you go, You're, they're loving it now. They're all back on board. Also, this road has come down. Did I? Maybe I did accidentally lower this or something. I didn't think so. Can I select the road node? Can't seem to see it for some reason. There's one there. Yeah, it's like under the water. <laughs> Can't select it. Oh, it's because it's part of this building, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe I will raise this actually, because it does look like it's causing issues. Is that alright? And uh, maybe just this bit as well then. That should be okay, right? A little extra protection. Protection. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, we've got this like slow climb. The key wall climbs with us and then the trees begin and we're over to our spa resort hotel. But of course, no power. Uh, not going to drag across the power line because we're hoping to fill it in. So I've just built this one road for now. Uh, because this is where I want the sort of nightclubs and stuff to go. So we're going to break it up with a bit of the leisure and some of the nightclubs. Don't want them all in a complete row. Uh, so here we are. So we got Club Alpha, Club Anastasia, and the nightclub. Actually, I think the Silverwind Casino will be nice in here. 500,000 cost. And it's got a relatively large area for noise pollution. I would say just stick it somewhere here. But it's weird to have it right on the road. I think it should come in a bit. Maybe we could bring a road in like this. That'd be weird. And just don't bring it all the way out. I don't want people to go all the way out. It's just an entrance, and then you can just loop if you want to get out. Because we don't want too many junctions in that other place. That'd be alright. Hmm. Maybe I should push it back just that little further. Or we could leave it. Yeah, actually, I'll do the opposite. I'm going to bring it forward. Let's see what this looks like. And we might even be able to cram a few little buildings in behind it then. Maybe. Is this strange? I feel like it's a little strange. The Silver Wind Casino. You're driving along? I don't know. I've seen things like that. In between other massive buildings as well, I guess. Especially that one. The PS5. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. I'll see what you guys say, but I'm okay with it. Is it perfect? Maybe not. Is it the worst thing ever? No. Let's bring this up a bit, flatten the terrain here a little, and uh, that should be okay. Alright, so there's room here now for a little bit of buildings, or we could just push this down a little and then we can fit in tier 3 side, or 3x3 three three buildings. Let's try that. So what do we got for a grid now? Ooh, yeah! That's good. That could work. So, Club Alpha. Street Fighter EX2 plus Alpha. If you know, you know. So that would fit there, but these ones unfortunately won't. They're too big. It would have to be at the side. What about this one? This one's good for a corner as well, because it's kind of, um... It's got like a corner, natural corner on it, I guess. 
Uh, all right, well, in that case, let's go with our small one then. We won't group them together. We'll go with our small one. That fits in here just about. I'll just move this over because it's not, it's not behaving. Oh, or, sorry, I'm so indecisive. I just realized, car park, would that not make more sense? Or we could have both. So you could pop that maybe there. No, let's go further down with this. And I think car park stuff could go in here. Yeah, yeah. Big car park, but I feel like it would be... It would be here, or there would be some sort of parking garage. Now, isn't there another one that I've used somewhere? I'm so certain there is another sort of parking garage that isn't the big tall one that's base game vanilla. I thought there was another one. No, I think actually what I'm thinking of is the school. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm thinking of that. All right, never mind then. I was thinking that like long building would work nice there. All right, let's just uh, move this just slightly just to fill that little gap that we've created. That's all okay. And then a club is here. That's weird now. Or is it? Just a club next to a car park? Especially a bougie club with stuff out the back of it. Club Alpha. Um, yeah. I wouldn't mind having it somewhere here, but I feel like it would need a, a break between these two areas and then a pathway that leads behind it. So let's do that. That would make sense to me. We can change those trees. Let's grab the trees that we've been using. Something like that. Back of the casino, members club. Yeah, it's all right. It's a little strange. Can't I just can't think on the fly right now very well, I guess, of what else to kind of put in that area. We also, sorry, I keep pressing escape. Need to put something in this area as well. Again, just trees are usually nice just to cover the area. So that, that could be fine, but if you've got ideas, I would appreciate it because I'm running, I'm running out of them. Um, what about here for the corner road for the club? Yeah, that kind of works there. Although the corner would be the opposite way, maybe at the edge down here. Something like that it comes baked in with a tree, so with two trees actually. Club love. Um, and then there's that other one, the final one. You can only place them once, because they're unique buildings. Club Anastasia. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with putting it something like that. And then a pathway that could lead in behind them. A little dingy back, back street pathway. Look at the piles of crap out here. Uh, yeah, so let's get rid of the junction thing. Something like that. Yeah, I'm alright with that, I think. Okay, and then, you know, we've got regular buildings that are going to pop into these places as well. Lest we forget. Uh, don't know how I'm going to do the zoning, though. I reckon get rid of this zoning. So let's try that. So turn off zoning, upgrades... Oh, it's going to be a pain just to get the road, not the thing. I might have to do that on my own then, because that's going to be a nightmare. Is there no other way to access that just a road? I can click it like this with move it, but I just can't do the upgrade. Oh, I tell you what, I could move it in and then upgrade it. That would probably work. I'd probably get away with that. Haha. <laughs> and then we just bring it back. <laughs> Creative solutions. That's what that is. There we go. Uh, it didn't really fix that <laughs> zoning issue, but if we upgrade the other one now, I reckon it will. So bring it back. There we go. A bit better. Okay, so let's try then here. Just some regular commercial zone. This will be a leisure district. It's already been assigned leisure. Uh, the power connection should already extend across, so that's good. We don't really have water yet. So bring water along this road. And for good measure, just link it up. Alright, let's have time play. It's been a while. Let's also just get some trees and refill in that area over here. We want them to be fairly spaced out.
Should I have billboards or something at the front? I'm trying to think, like, I don't know. I've been, I haven't really been to many casinos, but I've passed by a few. And they're normally, like, very ornate buildings that have a very clear view, nothing obstructing them. So I feel like putting trees in front of it's strange, but I just feel like that's an empty gap there with there's just nothing. So I can't think of an idea of what should go there. All right, we're starting to fill in a little bit. Let's just get our pathway. Bring this in somewhere like here. Let's create a little back back alley. People can walk through. It's going to be a consistent thing, though. The terrain differentials ain't much you can do. I don't think. Except be just much better at the game. And just consistently smoothing things out when it looks a bit off. One is reminded of Porto Benus in S Spain, near Marbella, south coast of Spain. There is uh, often like rows of restaurants and then rows of like clubs at the back of them. And then there's this like alley that you can walk through, like a, a cobbleock kind of alley, pedestrian only alley. I'm trying to just get rid of the zoning. There we go. Got it. All right, so we fill that in there. Now, there wasn't enough workers before. There certainly probably won't be now for these guys. And some of this could do with, not that, but more trees. There we go. We're gonna keep these ones pretty spaced. Let's go with 24, 24, 20. And we'll turn on tree anarchy. So pretty big spacing on those. You can even nudge them a little bit. It's just if they're in the way of the building too much. It's just to kind of block off that area a bit. That looks cool. Yeah, that's a perfect building. Does that grow? No. Oh my god, 59 workers. Wow. What about this one? Seven. That's better. Yeah, that looks great. That's exactly what I want. That's like a little club, club area. Nice. Might just move that over here, actually, to be honest. It's better than the one we got. So see you later. And hello, neighbor. Let's bring you in. So when it goes back to being green highlights, see it's orange now, that won't, that'll disappear. But if you put it back on its correct zoning close enough, like there, it understands what it is and it works. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. Bun, ba, bun, bun. That's the club music, right? That the kids will be playing. Clubs aren't just for kids. But to be honest, they're not for kids at all. I guess it depends on your definition of kid. All right, there we go. Yeah, it's taking shape. It's taking shape. Need some TLC. Some I had to go in there and really fix up the details a bit more. But it's taking shape. This was a nice one as well with the little open air bar at the back as well. Or uh, sitting lounge area. The Love Club, I got to say, is a little trashy. But it's popular. It's popping off right now. Um, the pathway is so severely messed up. Can we sink this down just a little bit? Because it'll sink it at the back, I guess. But I don't know what else can you do, man. Oh, my God. Now we're popping off. Hell, yeah. Do I have any club music I could put on? We could put on the actual in-game soundtrack for the first time ever. What do we have? Mars Radio, Concerts, Cities Radio, Classical, and Gold FM. I think I've got sound turned off, but if we can get some synth, that'd be good. We are the leading producer of minerals, ore, and natural resources. That's, uh, Surviving Mars music. That should have some synth, right? That's good enough. I mean, that guy's just parking way out on the road. Look at this, the obstructions. Quite happy with that. I think we're gonna have to leave the episode there. Before we do, we'll just have a little look at what we've made. I know we're not done. So we basically made this little spa resort and ocean resort hybrid. It's gonna turn the music down. It's actually super loud. The spa resort, open for business. We haven't attracted many people there just yet, but we will. We'll have lots of stuff going on here for them to get to. We'll have to monitor the traffic situation in this area, probably prevent parking on a lot of the roads. Casinos popping off, the Silverwind. Excellent. By the way, shout out to the modders of this game. 
So I'll update the description with all the extra buildings I've added. I added about 10 more. So there's these, the ones we've used anyway right now are the three kind of clubs. Club Alpha, Anastasia, and Club Love. There was Club XXX, which I was going to add in, but it had requirement of placing 10,000 industrial tiles. So I actually couldn't unlock it. So I was just like, okay, you need Rico if you want to put down those buildings yourself. But it's just, it's too much. It's too much. Club Alpha popping off, 5 a.m. Popping off. Loving that area. Really nice. We then built out the little village over here, which has nothing in it. We have to do our fishing industry. I think I'll start that next episode. I just needed to look at some of the buildings. I'm also thinking of streaming. I might stream on Monday uh, from when this video posts. So maybe we'll fill in some of the extra things I'm just unsure about. I love getting your feedback with all that stuff and streams are a perfect way of doing that. Also wanted to add in the aviation club. It's like a little landing strip for light aircraft for people to play around with. So I'm not sure if we should add that near the airport. It seems like you'd almost say no that it shouldn't be near the airport because it might be too close to where they fly. Uh, also, this area needs to change as well. Oh yeah, we added the uh, roundabout, which is busy, but it's working as intended. Just speeding time up now a little more. Are people taking my inside lane? So these guys, oh, they're moving out to this one. Are they going to finish on this one or keep going around? No, they're all going around. Oh, sorry, all finishing on that one. This guy went around though. He did the right thing. Good job. Even with the trams going through it, it's working. So that's impressive. Yeah, nice. How's the traffic situation then? It is the morning, so it should be getting busy. 74. Again, it's the same. So I can't say whether or not, you know, we've lifted the ban on trucks. Just want to double check that that's definitely true. Oh no, they're still banned on the bridge. Oh. All right, we'll just lift that real quick. I held... Uh, shift. So that should be it on everything, every segment now. Yeah. I think that's good. And it's not on the roundabout either. So now trucks can definitely go this way. I'll just speed up time. We'll give it a few minutes. Let's see if it comes to fruition. We see some of the trucks coming through this way. Now they've obviously got a direct access over this way. So I want to give them their toll, though. Toll booth right here before the bridge. That's what they're paying for. Paying, paying for access to the bridge is... Look at our beautiful city, man. This is great. So happy with it. I can't believe I built it. <laughs> it doesn't feel like I did it. Oh, something that these guys need. I've been meaning to do it is um, give them a fire station. They don't have one out here, but this guy is zooming along. This is regular speed. Hey, that's totally cheating, man. He's overtaking the tram. Oh, my God. Oh, he used to go all the way down here. Oh, and the annoying thing is to go all the way down and then around. I guess it doesn't matter. It's on the end. Out of the way. What the hell just happened there? He just crossed over the, uh, the median. Marina Mount Accessories. Oh, he got the little kid out. Thank God. Always think of the children. There we go. They're on the case. They're on the case. But yeah, it'd be tempting to get rid of this harbor and just see if traffic now coming in this way and coming from here would be better now that we've provided new solutions and also from over here. Maybe we don't need the harbor in the center anymore, you know? Uh, so I'll just turn that off. And uh, I think that's going to have to be pretty much it. So we'll slow time back down. We're at 95,800. Losing some population, though. I think it's because they're losing. these places are closing down. They lose their jobs and then they leave. But uh, yeah, apart from that, really happy with how the town is shaping up. This new area should be good, ready for filling with lots of different things. Of course, the only issue is you want it to be mostly commerce and everything, but it just adds to the constant traffic problem. So it'd be nice to just add some lower density or wall-to-wall -wall housing in certain areas here with some amenities, but it's tough to balance the noise pollution with these buildings. So I'm working on it. All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Bit of a weird one. Interrupted myself so many times. Described uh, driving lessons and tests and did multiple time lapses, but hopefully all good. All right, looking forward to seeing people's feedback. Hopefully I'll do a stream really soon. Appreciate all the comments and feedback that I've been getting and people just asking for more from the series. I am really am doing my best to give you a quality episode as much as I can. I can turn on the camera and just do jack sh 
and not be very good, but I'm I'm trying to make episodes, you know, where I have a plan, doing things into a bit better, hopefully. And I'm also trying to study up for um, City Skylines 2 and just get ready for that also. So anyway, thanks very much for everything so far. Still have a couple more episodes to go in this one. That's going to be it for me, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.